Well, welcome to Gin and Tonic Life. It's 96 degrees outside here in Blackstone, and the uh, my air conditioner broke. <laughs> it's not working. Heat pump's not working. So, uh, anyway, uh, it's an English drink. So, last night we talked about the house builder and uh, a, a uh, uh, affirmation that uh, Buddha said when he awoke about seeing the house builder and he would not build the house anymore. So tonight I want to talk about a, a poem by Rumi called The Great House. And uh, let me read this and then uh, we'll, we'll look into its metaphorical meaning. The Great House by Rumi. This being human is a great house. Every morning is a new arrival. A joy, a depression, a meanness, some momentary awareness comes as an unexpected visitor. Welcome and entertain them all. Even if they're a crowd of sorrows who violently sweep your house empty of its furniture, still, treat each guest honorably. He may be clearing you out for some new delight. The dark thought, the shame, the malice, meet them at the door laughing and invite them in. Be grateful for whoever comes because each has been sent to you by a guide from beyond. Now, isn't that a great poem? It's, um, uh, it really uh, reminded me of uh, a house uh, my wife and I ran in 1970 called Hope House, and uh, we had been fired from the uh, Zunai Presbyterian School for the Retarded, which was a little, uh, we were house parents there, and we were uh, it's way out in the country in Zunai, Virginia, and uh, we got fired for uh, taking the first black client to the local church. <laughs> and uh, so we got fired, and uh, and, and uh, it was, it, you know, it was, you know, right out of the Bible. I mean, it was around Christmas and my wife was pregnant. <laughs> we got fired. No job, no house. Boom. And uh, the local minister that we integrated put us up and found us a job being house parents at Hope House, which was a uh, kind of a, a home in uh, Norfolk, Virginia, that had been created as a foundation to uh, pre to give a life to the uh, adult retarded uh, when their parents died. They had this little home, so when they died, their children would have a place to stay. Well, nobody died, so there were plenty of empty beds, and so there were uh, eight, eight beds. So we would take in, just like in the, in the guest house, uh, the great house, uh, be a knock on the door, and there'd be some kid there with a teenager with his bags, that uh, maybe he'd just gotten out of juvenile home and had no place to go, or uh, a psychiatrist just put him there because his parents were abusive, uh, or he might be, uh, uh, anyway, it was such a mix. I mean, it was a zoo. But it was always welcome. And uh, so we kind of like ran that as a family. This was our family. We'd go shopping and, and uh, everybody got a cart and we'd descend on the grocery store like locusts and, uh, and uh, went to the beach. And uh, it was just, there was no uh, vacation and it was just, uh, just our family. And we did that for two years. And, um, and it was a uh, really remarkable experience because it was not institutional, it was not clinical, there was no time, there was, we, we had, we, we had uh, a housekeeping money and uh, we could do what we wanted. You know, it was no, uh, uh, as, as long as we didn't uh, uh, steal anything or cause any uproar. <laughs> it was just one big crazy family. And uh, we went in there with the fire and we left with the fire. We went in there because the house parents that had previous been there, they were Seventh-day Adventist and, and they kind of looked at it as missionary work. And uh, one of the clients, uh, Threw the lady, pushed the lady down the stairs. She broke her arm, so they left. And uh, and at the same time, somebody said, 
fire to the kitchen, so there was a kitchen fire. And so we were there for two years, and when we decided to leave, uh, we were going to Cleveland to practice yoga, and uh, one of the boys had stuck something in a wall socket upstairs and started a fire up the wall. So we left, we went in with the fire, we left with the fire. But it was a, it was a great house, like Ruby's Point. And so then, um, you know, now we live in, uh, we, we, we live here in Blackstone in a big old great house. My wife was born here. And uh, let me show you a picture. Hold on just a minute. Uh, see this picture here? This, this, is, this is this, sorry, it's backwards. But this says, uh, no place like home. Tilly at 606 South Main Street, 1943. So here's my wife in 1943. And then I photoshopped her in here. And this is our house now, but it looks a lot better than this. Uh, and we have grass. <laughs> so, you know, so this, this house has been, we, we, it was a photography studio for many years. And so it was always uh, a home and a business. Whoever knocked, the door welcomed, the door was open. And uh, so we kind of like continued that, uh, that this house has been like that great house, you know. Uh, uh, never know who's going to knock on the door. Um, it was never locked, and, and uh, we'd be sitting in the living room watching a movie or something, watching TV, and somebody would just walk in and say, uh, can we get a passport? <laughs> or whatever. Anyway, so it was a, this has been a great house like that. And then the, uh, my practice of meditation uh, really kicked in seriously in, in uh, 2005. And so meditation is a great house. When you sit to meditate, you welcome every perception as a guide to your inner, found inner being. You welcome every, every thought, every perception is welcomed. Uh, and I think this is what Ruby was pointing to when he talked about welcoming sorrows and joys so that uh, you become a great house, a great mind that welcomes not only other people, but your own people, your own thoughts, your own sensations and feelings. No discrimination, no exclusion, no rejection, no uh, segregation, no prejudice, no discriminating mind at all. Just a welcoming of what is. If you open your mind, you open your door, come on in. It's okay. And that welcoming integrates your mind. That welcoming makes your mind whole. That welcoming heals the mind. That welcoming makes your mind your soul because it doesn't discriminate and divide and wound and reject. Everything is welcomed, you see. And then when that happens, your response is always creative because your response comes from your whole mind. Creativity is whole. It's not, you can't create anything from a divided mind. You can't create anything from a judgmental mind or a mind that says only this and not that. You can't, just, you can't create from a, from a, um, uh, a partiality, a preference. Creativity is whole. Welcoming is whole. So in order to create, you have to welcome. In order to create, and creativity is love, in order to love, you have to welcome everything, you know. And that welcoming is itself wholeness, you see. And from that wholeness comes a spontaneous response to life. And that spontaneous response is going to be creative, is going to be new, is going to be a surprise. So when the mind is whole, and it welcomes every thought and perception as a guide to your wholeness, then that is a practice. That is a practice that is uh, done every moment of the day. You're constantly realizing when you're not welcoming, and as soon as you see that you've hung a sign up on the door saying closed, the seeing that you put a closed sign up there takes it down and it opens. And when we open 
everything changes because life is change. When we put a close sign up, everything stops. Change stops. At least we think it does, but it really doesn't. So this poem was a great poem for me, uh, The Great House, and I hope uh, you enjoyed it, and, uh, and I hope your air conditioner is working.